Let's talk about the training error and the error that your classifier is going to have tomorrow. So what's a training error? Um, this is the training error. Um, and uh, it's actually, uh, this, is, this is a very general definition. So we'll use different, uh, we'll, we will use different metrics for different uh, types of tasks and different types of classifiers. Uh, but in general, almost all of them look kind of like that. Right? So your training error is uh, you sum up over your training examples. Training examples are pairs x, i, y, i. Right? So the, an email and the class that's supposed to go with it. Right? And what you're summing up is you're summing up this error function. This, and this error function basically looks at the two arguments. Right? So this is the true value for xi. This is what our label says. Uh, and this is what we predicted. This is what our classifier or regressor predicts for this xi. So error is some measure of whether they are the same or not. And if they're not the same, how far off they are. And there's lots of ways to define it, and we'll talk about some of them later in the lecture. But in general, just think of this as this is, this is a function that is very, very small when these things are equal or almost equal, right? And it's large when they are um, when they're different from each other in a significant way. So that's the training error. You basically, you compute the error for each point and then you average it over your whole data set. <clears throat> so generalization error, this is how well we're going to do in the future on the data that will come tomorrow. Now, of course, we don't know what the data will be. So we don't have the x i's, right? We don't know what data will come tomorrow and we don't have the labels for them. Um, so we can't actually write an expression for the generalization error, um, but we, um, we can write it in a, in a very vague form that will actually make sense um, in a second. So we don't know what data will come tomorrow, but we do know the range of possible things we could expect. Right? So if we're, classifying, um, if we're classifying bitmaps into digits, we know that data that comes tomorrow will be 20 by 20 black and white bitmaps, right? And there's only so many of them. In fact, there's two to the 400 of them. That's a very big number, but it's a defined space, right? We know that we're not going to have color photographs of kittens <coughs> coming into our classifier tomorrow. We know that it'll be 20 by 20 and it'll be black and white. So we actually know the range of access, and we know the range of Ys, because we only have so many classes. Same thing with emails, same thing with natural photographs. You always know the range. It's just sometimes this range is humongous. So um, if you know the range, that you can actually write out the generalization error, and it looks like that. Right? So uh, we still have our error function. So that takes the x and the y. Uh, and f of d of x, this is our prediction for x, and this computes how far off our prediction is from the true value, right? So the integral goes over all possible x and y pairs, um, and this pyx, this is the probability distribution, this is the joint distribution of how often in the future we would expect to have y and x appear together. So, um, by the way, there's a sum there, there's an integral there, y, It's a range. Yeah, OK, right. Now, all right, so if you were actually doing this, if you're doing 20 by 20 black and white bitmaps, would you need an integral? No, right? Because there's actually a finite number of those, right? 2 to the 400, so you could sum up over all of them. The reason you need an integral is because sometimes you will have numeric values, right? You will have, uh, you will have um, animals that have height and weight, and those are going to be real numbers. And there isn't a finite set that covers them. So you have to talk about integrating over all possible heights and all possible weights of those things. And this density becomes really, really important because it tells you what types of heights are plausible in your, <clears throat> in your, uh, in your data set. So that is the definition of the generalization error. And um, in general, that error is going to always be uh, not smaller than your training error, right? Because whatever classifier you come up with is going to overfit to some degree. Um, and uh, the unfortunate thing about this guy is we cannot ever actually compute it. 
Even for a simple case, even if we had 20 by 20 bit bitmaps where we could actually enumerate everything, we can't compute this guy. Why? <coughs> Can't look into the future, but specifically in this formula, what don't we know? Yes, this guy. Right. We know everything. We know this. We know the error function, the dx. Yeah, we can do it. Uh, but the joint distribution, that's what we don't know. We don't know how often in reality. So this is the truth. This is like, you know, uh, this is the ground truth. We don't know how often really these emails co-occur with spam and ham uh, classes. Uh, in fact, if we did, that in and of itself would be the best possible classifier you could ever have. Right? And, uh, and if you're curious about that, I think PMR is your friend. Um, uh, <clears throat> so we cannot compute this. We cannot compute the generalization error. Um, but what we can do is we can approximate it. Right? What can we do? So we can um, we have a concept of testing error. Now the testing error is basically an attempt to get as close to the generalization error as we can. And the way you compute the testing error is you use the same formula as we had for the training error, but you compute it over a special part of your training data called the testing set. So what you do is you take your training data you split it randomly, right? You take a certain portion of it, a half maybe or a quarter, you set it aside and you never ever let your classifier look at it, right? Because if it'll look at it, it'll overfit to it. And if you don't let it look to it, then it can't possibly have overfit to it because it hasn't seen it. Right? So you take the other part of the data, uh, that is called the, the, that will now be called our training set, and you train the classifier on the training set you let it estimate all of the parameters that it has, and then once it has estimated it, you run it on the data that you didn't let it see, on, the, on, on your testing set. Right. And that will allow you to compute an estimate of how well your classifier would generalize to data that it hasn't seen before. Why? Because it hasn't seen the testing set before. You, you didn't let it see it. Right. <clears throat> so Now, uh, it is an estimate. Uh, we know some things about this estimate. So if we, do, if we do this sampling in a way that is unbiased, so if our testing set is really representative of the entire data set of this, of this uh, joint distribution, then we have some friendly laws from statistics that tell us that as the size of the set gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the error that you observe on this testing set is going to approach, in the limit, equal the true generalization error. Right? And that, of course, happens when n goes to uh, infinity. Right? So you know that it's unbiased. You know that if, uh, if you have lots and lots of data, it will eventually approach the right number. Uh, but you don't really know how close it is. And how close it is depends on the size of the testing set that you uh, introduce. So let's go over an example and see how you can actually compute uh, some, some brackets, some bounds on the generalization error. So say we have a binary classification task and we have 100 instances in our test set and the training set is whatever it is. So we have trained our classifier on the training set and now we're testing it on this 100 instances. It's never seen them before and we're assuming that they're random sample, so they're representative of this joint. Um, and let's say that it classifies 75 of them correctly and 25 of them it gets wrong. So what does it mean? It means that, uh, and let's say we're using just simple misclassification errors, which uh, plus the percent, class of, percent misclassified, which just counts how many things you misclassified. Right? So in that case, your error is going to be 25%. Right? Uh, so what do we know about the generalization error? We know from this that it will be somewhere around 0.25, but we don't really know how close. So can we guess how close it's going to be? Um, and it turns out that yes, we can, and, uh, and, and we do it by estimating a confidence interval for the future error. Uh, 